Hi everyone, would you like to see my new collection of sewing goodies from this week? Yes? Okay then, let's get started. <laughs> Hi everyone, welcome to or welcome back to my channel. My name's Laura and I'm the Carpe Diem Stitcher. Uh, and this is my channel where I bring you um, fabric hauls, pattern reviews, um, my plans, um, I show you my makes, mostly sewing but also a little bit of knitting and crochet thrown in. So if that interests you, please um, consider subscribing and if you enjoy the content on this video, then please give me a thumbs up as it helps YouTube to um, know that this content is interesting to people and to share my content with other people. So that would be great. Thank you. So I am coming to you today, as you've probably noticed, from a slightly different place in my sewing room. And those of you who've been with me a while will kind of recognise it as twirl twirl land it's where i film my t-shirts and my jersey top twirls um and in fact talking of jersey tops you'll recognize this one this is um the maven patterns somerset tea which is my uh number one favorite t-shirt pattern of the moment and i'm just wearing it with a ready to wear fleece over the top because for some reason although it's quite warm i'm a bit cold and um, apologies in advance if this is a bit jerky and there's a few edits in it because um, I went out for a run this morning and ever since I've come back I can't stop sneezing and I think it's hay fever but because I feel a bit cold I'm just really hoping I'm not getting a cold but anyway if there seems to be a few jerky bits it'll be because I've had to stop to sneeze and I've edited it out so apologies in advance if that happens. So yeah so um this week I've been spending a bit of money and I thought you might like to see what I got. So um, the first thing that I bought was um, in the, um, as a result of the discount goodie bag in the online sewing weekender. So the online sewing weekender, if you're not familiar with it, is um, something that's put on by um, the fold line. So Rachel and Kate from the fold line, the pattern, online pattern purchasing company and um, Charlotte Emma Patterns and Charlotte is a pattern designer and what they do is they create a lot of online content so there's some tutorials there's kind of sewing catch-ups from people about how they got into sewing um, and also things like um, Marie I'll put I'll put the details down below of, of, of their um, Instagram or YouTube um, channels uh, did a video around how to style um, a kind of capsule wardrobe and I watched um, a really helpful video by Alison Smith about how to fit trousers which was really interesting and also um, a video by Judith and Sandy from Sew Over 50 which was all about sewing for um, changing body when you're over 50 and I'm going to come back to that video right at the very end of this vlog um, I'm going to come back and talk a little bit more about what they said um, but the other thing that you get in the online sewing weekend so it's great you have all this content and everybody works on what they want to work on you know obviously at home with their own sewing machines and they also have chat rooms so you can go online you can go on zoom and join in the chat room so if you want to sew with people and chat and there's a facebook group so it's lovely because you can be as interactive or non-interactive as you want and the videos are staying up for a year so i am definitely going to go back to the alison smith video with a notebook and pen and write stuff down because it was super helpful but I was watching it while I was cutting out um, pattern, as in cutting out the paper pattern. And I really needed to concentrate on it, so I need to go back and watch it again, really. Anyway, so they have this discount goodie bag, online goodie bag. And one of the companies that was offering a discount was um, the lovely Harriet at Sony Sunshine. And so I bought a um, couple of bits of fabric from her. And um, the first one is this beautiful um, bamboo jersey. 
I've never sewn with bamboo jersey before, but it is super soft, so soft. And I just really like the colour. So I can't remember for the life of me whether it's in the colour palette or not for me. But I just really liked it. I've, I've worn khaki before in the past and quite enjoyed it. So um, I got that um, and I thought that would be really good to do a pattern which I've said that I am going to make. And I'm hoping to make it in late June for um, So Joey's um, Summer T-shirt Challenge. Um, and I'll pop the details of that down below as well and I want to use it to make this pattern which I've shown you before and this is um, a birder pattern it was in the April birder and I think I showed you it then and said I'd really like to make it and it's got this really interesting sleeve detail so that was the fabric that I bought for that because I didn't I didn't really have anything suitable in my stash because I wanted to make it out of a plain fabric to really show that off and I just didn't have anything. So genuinely, I needed to go out and get some fabric for that. And I was hanging on because I knew that there would be a discount goodie bag for the online sewing weekend. So I thought, I'll wait and I'll get something then. And had a look through what she got. And I just thought that was so nice and so classic. So that's what I'm going to do. And I'm hoping to do that towards the end of June when I've got the shirt dresses that I need to make done. And also... To go with that, I got a bobbin of Gutemann thread, but this is the, um, you can see it's got the green bottom on it and it's recycled um, thread, which I've not used before. So I'm excited to try that because obviously, you know, if we can do our bit towards saving the planet, then, then that's all to the good. So I'm going to give that a go. Um, Harriet stocks that kind of as her main um, thread. And they've got exactly the same colours as they have for the normal Gutemann range. So I thought I'd give that a go. And then the second um, type of fabric that I got is a cotton jersey. And I got two pieces of this, largely because there was a remnant. And then I bought um, some off the bolt as well um, to give me a bit more. And it's this. It's this, um, I think it's called Terrazzo the pattern um, and I just think it's really nice and lively and it reminds me of a kind of leopard printy multicoloured fabric that I um, was going to buy last year and very rarely do I see a fabric and then think oh you know I should get that and then not get it and then it sells out and I regret it it's very rare that I kind of think oh no that really got away and I really should have got it but that leopard print fabric I really, really, really wish I'd bought. And so I looked at this and I thought, no, I really like it. And Liz, um, who's the baker that sews, um, made an outfit out of this and she posted it on Instagram recently. And I just thought, no, I have to have some of that. And again, that was before the online sewing weekend. So I thought I will wait and have a look and see if Harriet's still got it in stock. And she did have. So as I say, I got a remnant and then I bought some more off the bolt. So I've got around about two metres, probably just over, I think. And I'm intending to make with that the pattern that I showed you um, last week because um, Harriet's advice about this is that you, you make something that's fairly loose and drapey because um, of the fact that it's not... Um, it's not printed, it's printed onto the fabric rather than um, kind of woven into the fabric. And so it's better to make something fairly loose and fairly drapey with it. So my plan is to try to make, I think, View E, which is this one with the double folds. If I show you on the back, you can see it there. And it's got um, different coloured sleeves with it. So I think I've probably got some black jersey left that I can make one of the sleeves from. And I'm not too fussed if I've actually got one the same and one different. But we'll see. I'll just pop it together with whatever I can. Um, and so that's my plan to make to get this made up. If I can get this done in June, great, because it would be another T-shirt. But if I don't, I think it will come up fairly soon in my makes. And thank you to the lovely viewer who commented when I showed this in my last video 
that this can come up quite long. So I'll make sure that I um, kind of check the length on me before I cut it out because that's that's really helpful. So thank you. I can't remember who you are at the moment, but thank you ever so much for making that comment. So that's the fabric and that's all the fabric I bought, which I thought was pretty virtuous for me. Um, I also intend to buy some patterns from the fold line uh, because they've also got a discount. So I'm going to buy the shorts pattern that I've seen for my husband's minion shorts. And I might buy a couple of shirt patterns for me, although I keep thinking I shouldn't, but I'm really tempted by a couple of the Liesl shirt patterns. So there's one that's kind of classic shirt and there's one that's got princess seams and, and I haven't got any shirt patterns with princess seams. So I'm quite tempted to get those, but we'll see. Um, but their sale goes for a few days longer. So I haven't bought them as yet. I've just, I just kind of left it and thought, well, I'll mull over what I want. So, but I, I am definitely going to get the shorts pattern and I, th I think I'll, almost certainly get the princess seam pattern it's the classic one I think well do I really need it but it gets such good reviews um Whitney from Tomcat Stitchery has made it and really really likes it and really really rates it so I think I'd quite like to give it a go so that's the fabric and then in the middle of the week I decided that since I was going to make some shirt dresses, I really needed to get some buttons and I didn't have any buttons. I had a look in my stash and I didn't have anything suitable. And so I just went down to my local, um, actually it's a yarn shop, um, but it also sells um, quite a good range of buttons. And so I bought for the Alex dress from Sew so Over It, which I started making already this week. I'll show you, this is... This is the collar that's ready to go on the dress. So to go with that, I got, because it's got all sorts of shades of pink in it, and I did take a swatch down to try and match it. I just got these buttons here. So just very plain shirt buttons. So hopefully you can see that. So it really goes with the very, the very bright pink, or near enough anyway. Um, flowers so I just got those and so that was that and then for the um, wearable toile of the tilde dress that I'm going to make the atelier jupe one which you'll see I haven't cut this out yet but I have got just plain blue buttons to go with that which I think will be fine uh, and I'm, I think I mentioned I'm probably going to try and do the hidden placket on this one and then decide whether or not I want the hidden placket on the, the real thing with the um, Atelier Jupe fabric that I've got. Is it Atelier Jupe or is it Lady McElroy? It might be, no, it's Lady McElroy, I think. I can't remember now. It's Lady McElroy. Rainbow Clouds, Lady McElroy. So, yeah, I'm, I'm tossing up. But I thought if I get some plain buttons, because that's quite a busy pattern. So, yeah, I'm really happy with that. So I got those, which is great, because now I can crack on and hopefully get the Alex dress finished fairly soon. And then I also um, bought some bias binding from um, the Specky Seamstress, Laura from the Specky Seamstress. Um, and... From some of my makes before you might have recognized that I've used I've used some of these before so these are replacements for um, bias binding that I've already had from her and used so I use the made to measure one on my licorice all sorts shirt so if I can find a picture I'll pop it up here um, and then I used the planets on the uh, Doctor Who shirt that I made for Steve um, and in both cases, I think it works really well. I think it works particularly well where you've got the dipped shirt line hem. Um, and in the end, I was tossing up whether or not to do that on the Alex dress, but I have done it. And I think using bias binding will give it a much better finish than um, trying to hem it. I think, I think it gives it a really nice finish. So I might well use the made to measure um, on that one as well. I'm just looking again for my fabric. You'll see that it matches up pretty well. Um, 
I'm half tempted to try and do some, um, you know, self fabric bias binding, but I don't know. Um, I'll see. I'll see how I'm doing time wise as well. But if not, I think the made to measure one will look quite nice kind of peeping through. And then I got um, some cat swans. So that's one of her other designs. She's got a dog one as well. So if you're a dog lover, um, yeah, do go and have a look because there's dogs as well. And she's getting one or two new designs out now because um, she did temporarily close the shop and now she's back. She's got um, a business partner called Getting a, it's Getting a Stitch, um, who is her business partner. So I'll pop the details of Laura's shop down below, but it's really reasonably priced. And if you buy more meters, you actually get a bit of a discount. So yeah, and can really recommend it. I've used it before and it's really soft and it works really well. It doesn't, it kind of goes around corners really easily and you don't have to fight it at all. So yeah, so that was the next purchase. Apologies for the rustling there. And then Going back to the birder pattern, of course, I'm going to need to trace that out because, as you probably know, um, birder patterns look like this. So, reminds me a bit of a tube map or a railway map, but you have to essentially find your um, pattern lines and then trace it out, but they don't come with seam allowances. And so, I'm going to need to add those. And I thought, well, I do quite like a lot of the patterns in the Birder magazine, so this could be a thing. And also, you know, sometimes you end up having to grade out or add extra seam lines. And so I've wanted to try these for a while. And these are, um, I don't know if you remember from one of the earlier series of Sewing Bee, Jen Hogg, who was, I think she was a lawyer who um, then, you know, she entered Sewing Bee. She was, she's a Scottish lady. And she set up a company since she uh, was on Sewing Bee, and it's called Generates. And so she's created these um, seam circles. So what you do, um, and I'll pop a link to her website, uh, which has got a little demonstration video of how these work. But you put your pen or pencil into these, and um, she gives you, for, certainly for 1.5 centimetres, you have different sizes of... Um, tracing to put to put your pen in um, and in fact you can do it when you do the bigger circles you you put it you put your one centimeter for either your pen or pencil in the middle and then you just they all hook into each other you can see hopefully that they all interlock so you put the outside of the circle on the existing line of the pattern and then if you draw around it you follow the line with the wheel it will come out um with your seam allowance properly drawn out and, and all the proper nuances, if you like, and curves of the pattern. And she does it in inches and she also does it in centimetres. And I really couldn't decide which to get. And my husband looked at them and went, well, why don't you just get both? So how could I refuse? So that's what I did. So I've got the inches one and the centimetres ones. And they were, I think £18 a set, so pretty good value really, and that included postage within the UK, first class. I said there'd be an edit at some point, didn't I? So yes, overtaken by sneezes again. So yes, as I was saying, I ordered them one morning around about nine o'clock, and they came in the post the next day, so that was really quick, really quick. And they came with a lovely little um, card, uh, says on the back, unique and original tools and notions for everyday sewing generates by Jen Hogg. Socially responsible designs made in Scotland because I wouldn't. And then on the front, it just says, thank you, Jen. And she's put in this really cute little wooden button, which says sewing is my superpower and a little person in a cape. Sorry, I'm not doing that very well, am I? There you go. Yeah. So, so that's all the kind of small things that I bought. And I've got one final purchase to show you. And this will explain why I am standing in a different place. So if I just, um, I'll pause this and I'll take you around 
and show you a different view and you'll see what I've bought. So here we go, a bit of a change of camera angle here. So when you saw me a minute ago, I was standing over by the cupboards. Um, but you can see um, that I now have a very large table. And if I just show you, if I just move the camera down, tip the camera down, you can see that it is on casters. And actually, you'll see that it's split into three parts. And you can fold... Um, each of the um, outside leaves down so that it drops down so it will store just within the width of um, the central section so that when I'm not using it I'll be able to keep it up against the wall of my sewing room. So um, the reason I got this um, I think I probably mentioned in one of my earlier videos um, I think I think when I did one of the Q&A's and, and one of the questions was which bits of sewing do you hate and I said I hate cutting out because I find it really hard when I'm um, having to kneel down all the time um, to cut out large pattern pieces. Um, because smaller ones I could always cut out on the desk with my sewing machine, but bigger ones I used to end up um, cutting out on the floor. And I think because I'm trying to cut out and sew dresses at the moment, it's really brought it home to me that it's just incredibly difficult. And I think the fact that I find it so uncomfortable um, has just slowed me down, if I'm honest. Um, so in the end, I took the plunge and I bought this um, folding um, and um, table from Amazon. And it is from somewhere called Sewing Online. So it is intended to be um, in part used for sewing where you could use it for crafting. It's actually quite high off the ground. I'll show you in a minute. I'll, I'll come and stand next to it so you can see. Um, but um, you can see, I don't know if you can see, let me take you in a bit closer. You see the pattern piece at the far side of it. That is um, the, let me have a look. It is the front of the um, Atelier Jupe tilde dress um, that I'm going to make. And you can see that that fits quite comfortably on the um, table for me to cut out. And that pattern effectively goes from the shoulder and it goes pretty much down to my ankle. So I doubt really I'm going to cut anything out that's going to be um, longer than that, if I'm honest. So so that's great. If I can cut things out that are as long as that, that's um, fantastic. And of course, if I'm cutting something smaller, then I don't need to pull um, the table out entirely. I can just pull up one of the leaves. So what I'll do is I'll use it for a bit and then I'll come back if you would like and do a review of it and how I'm finding it. But yeah, if I can try to kind of put myself in the shot, I don't know. Let me see if I can do this. So I'll wedge you on my ironing board if I can. Apologies for the rustling. And if you hear a crash, you'll know I've got it horribly, horribly wrong. But if I go and stand behind that now... Hopefully you can see, um, so it comes up roughly to my hip height. So if you imagine cutting out, um, it's quite a lot higher than my desk um, and um, where I have my overlocker. So I think it's going to be great. And obviously I'll use my cutting mats on it as I had before. So I, I, I know that I'm really lucky that I've been able to buy this and I do know that other people are not as fortunate. Um, so I count myself very lucky, but I'm really hoping that it will help me kind of speed up when I cut things out and make me able to batch cut things, which I think is still going to be my preferred way of trying to do things, but hopefully it won't make it so um, uncomfortable for me. So that's my last purchase. So I'm going to come back round and by the power of editing, I'll come back to you slightly more close up. So see you in a sec. Hi everyone, I'm back. Um, so I'm now sitting um, kind of at my sewing desk. So this gives you a little bit of an idea of, of the layout of my sewing room. So you can see over my shoulder is the sewing table where I was just standing and I've got my overlocker behind me. If you'd like a tour of my sewing room, please do let me know. It is something that I've had on my radar to do, but 
I really need to kind of give it a bit of a tidy, particularly now that I've got the the new table, um, because that's meant I've had to have a bit of a, a kind of change around of, of where things are. And I've got a whole load of patterns which are sitting in a big um, kind of, I don't know what you call it, kind of like a big plastic case. But actually in this room there is a filing cabinet with a lot of space in it, so I really want to try and put them in the filing cabinet. And then I can use the plastic case for fabric or something. Um, so yeah, so if you would like a tour of my sewing room, do let me know. And then when it's in a state where I can share it and take you around it with some kind of semblance of order, then I'll be very happy to do that. So really, in terms of the sewing, that's it for this week. I am getting on with the Alex dress. You saw the collar a minute ago. Most of the dress is behind me there. I'm actually thinking, I've, I've started making it up, just about to put the collar on got the sleeves to do and the buttonholes and things but I think I might put pockets in the side seam so I think um, that's probably I'll probably test my new table by cutting out some pockets and popping those in because I think it would look I think it would just kind of feel better with some pockets in it isn't everything better for pockets I know I didn't say that about the jersey dresses but I'm allowed to contradict myself so that's fine but I think with that dress it'll be absolutely fine as long as they're not so huge that you know they start flapping around the edge of the dress which I'm sure they won't so I think that's going to be on the agenda this afternoon uh, now there's one more thing that I want to talk to you about um, really quickly and it's not something that I'm likely to talk about very much at all on my channel but um, it's something that came out of me watching the um, sewing weekend or I said I'd come back to the video where um, Judith and Sandy from Sew Over 50 were talking about sewing for a changing body once you're over 50 and they said something in that that resonated really deeply with me so I just wanted to spend a couple of minutes talking about that um, and what I suggest is if this is something that triggers you, and I'll tell you what it is in a minute, that um, and you don't want to watch, then this is the end of the sewing content. So if that is you, thank you so much for watching. And um, I'm hoping to get another video out next weekend, although I do have visitors um, with me. So I may or may not, but I'd really quite like it if I can finish the Alex dress then I'll try and do a May Makes video with a bit of a pattern review in that. So um, I'm really hoping to do that. As I say, thank you so much for watching. Thank you for commenting. If I haven't replied to you yet, I most certainly will in the next few days. I've got the whole of next week off. Hurrah! So um, that'll be good. I'm um, hoping to get some sewing done, although, as I say, we do have visitors with us. Um, but yes, so what I am going to talk to you about is breast cancer. So if that is a subject that you find triggering um, or difficult to address, then please feel free to um, stop watching the video now and I'll pop up a sign as well saying trigger warning. Otherwise, if you're interested to hear my story and what I have to say then please keep watching okay so as I say I was watching the video um, while I was sewing on Sunday and Judith and Sandy uh, were talking about sewing for a changing body and they could you know they covered lots of different things um, around you know having to make forward shoulder adjustments and this kind of thing and then they got on to the way that our breasts can change and they talked about having to lower bus starts and as as gravity takes a hold and then they also mentioned that although it's not uniquely the case women who are over 50 are more prone to get breast cancer than women who are younger and i would add to that and men um, because my husband's cousin um, had breast cancer, he found a lump in his breast and it turned out it did turn out to be cancerous. So this is not something that exclusively applies to women over 50, but as I say, it's more common. And 
this really resonated because this is what happened to me two years ago. So if you cast your mind back to my very first video and I'll leave a link to it down below and I explained a little bit about why I'm the Carpe Diem Stitcher. And I think I said something along the lines of, well, you know, like everybody, I had a terrible 2020 and I um, kind of thought, well, you know, I've always wanted to do a YouTube channel. So if not now, then when? Um, and, and the Carpe Diem means seize the day. So it's kind of like, well, just just go do it. Just go do it. So I did it. But what I didn't say was that one of the reasons I had a terrible 2020 was that in May 2020, so I've just passed the second anniversary now, I um, found a lump in my left breast and it moved around a lot and I've had this happen before and it turned out to be a cyst and it was drained so it was all fine. But obviously I went to the GP and bearing in mind this is in the middle of the pandemic so I had a telephone consultation. I went to my GP, my GP said, yeah, it's probably a cyst, but we'll refer you. And I was lucky and I got a cancellation appointment for kind of not that long after, really, probably about 10 days after. And off I went to the hospital and had a mammogram and I saw the consultant who examined me and I couldn't find the lump. It was moving about and he said, looks like a cyst on the mammogram it moves around it behaves like a cyst it's probably a cyst let's send you to ultrasound and they'll probably drain it and I got into ultrasound and they said it's solid and they did a biopsy and they took biopsies of my lymph nodes as well and the results came back and I went back to the hospital and it was cancer and it was a grade three, which means it's it was aggressive, but it wasn't a very big lump. So it was early, very, very early stage, but it was aggressive. And fortunately, it hadn't got into my lymph nodes. And that was a Monday and I had surgery eight days after that. Um, so if you're in the UK, this will make sense. I had surgery on the NHS but because of the pandemic I had it done in a private hospital so I was really lucky. They took the lump out, they removed some lymph nodes as a precaution and I went back a few weeks later and they were pretty confident that they'd got it all and it wasn't in my lymphs. And then they did a genome test to see if I needed chemotherapy and I didn't because I could take some tablets which would give me the same, wouldn't, having chemotherapy wouldn't give me any added benefit over having the tablets. Um, and so I didn't need chemotherapy but I did have a week of radiotherapy. And again I was kind of lucky because the pandemic rushed through some changes to radiotherapy which meant I had kind of like the equivalent of three weeks treatment in a week um, which was good really because it meant I only had to go um, hospital was about an hour away uh, so I went Monday to Friday for a week and I've now been taking the tablets and I have a mammogram every year for five years and I did actually record this section earlier in the week and then kind of thought no I'll just do it on the end of the video and at that point I said I'm due a mammogram next month and I phoned up the next day to book it and they went oh can you come on Thursday so I actually had the mammogram two days ago but I need to wait a little while for the results um so keep your fingers crossed um so yeah so it happened to me and I found my lump and that meant that I have, I gave myself the best possible chance of surviving. And I'm never complacent about it. So, you know, we will see what happens. Touch wood and pending the results of the mammogram, I'm okay at the minute. But what Judith and Sandy said was, please, please, please check your breasts. 
so and they said and tell those who you love to do the same and the sewing weekender and sew over 50 are actually quite precious to me because in 2020 it ran in the weekend between me knowing I had cancer and having my surgery and I'd put up a post on Instagram saying oh I'm having a bit of a rotten time health wise and this is just nice to take my mind off it and both the fold line and so over 50 came back with really supportive messages so they've been supportive and I just wanted to spread the message so if you have breasts please check them I'll put a link to a website called Copperfield down below so if you're not sure how to do it that website gives you lots of details so yeah so that's all I wanted to say really and um, I hope you don't mind me taking the chance to say it but I I kind of felt that because they talked about it on the sewing weekend and I didn't know how many of you were on it I just wanted to take the time to mention it and to tell you my story and to let you know that because because I knew what my breasts felt like. I have to be honest, and so I wasn't checking them at the time, I was lying in bed and I found it. But because I know what my breasts feel like, because I do check them regularly, I knew this was different and I knew I had to get help. And, you know, it could have turned out to be another cyst, but it didn't. And I'm just very lucky because I got fantastic treatment, notwithstanding the pandemic. Um, as I say, I'm in Wales. And I know that hasn't been the case for all women during the pandemic I'm very aware of that so I do count myself lucky it's not always easy to deal with the aftermath physically and emotionally but I'm hanging in there so yes I hope you don't mind me talking about that and next video it'll be back to the sewing so thanks for listening I hope you are having a great weekend and that you're getting some sewing in um, and if you like what you see and you enjoy the channel then please do consider subscribing and hit that like button and if you want to hear more from me hit the notification bell in the corner that's all from me looking forward to talking to you all again soon bye for now